A Vickers Wellington bomber from the 75th Squadron returned home after a successful assault on Munster. However, a German BF-110 night fighter appeared beneath the British bomber, opening fire with devastating cannon fire. The round burst through the gasoline tank in the starboard wing, causing a rogue fire that nearly destroyed the plane. Pilot Ruben Widowson ordered the crew to evacuate, but the plane and its crew remained unwavering. Despite attempts to extinguish the fire with fire extinguishers, the fire continued, threatening the entire aircraft. The plane's unique geodetic airframe allowed pilot James Allen Ward to escape the searing torture. Ward offered to scale the flying monstrosity, reach the flaming wing, extinguish the fire, wear a parachute, and exit the aircraft. Despite strong gusts, he remained determined to reach the inferno as long as the plane was in the air, clinging tightly to the airframe. The Vickers Wellington, a British bomber, was praised for its resilience but was surpassed in speed and range by more sophisticated bombers during World War II. Despite its humble origins, it made a significant contribution to the Royal Air Force and gained the affection of British pilots for its tough exterior, practicality, and unwavering determination. The Day Bomber, despite its humble origins, became the only British bomber manufactured during the war and in larger quantities than any other British-built aircraft. The New Wellingtons were crucial in the Battle of the Heligoland by the RAF bombers were ambushed by a German swarm, resulting in the deaths of 12 Wellingtons. Despite extreme hardship, the surviving pilots managed to down four German fighters. The Wellington had established itself as the mainstay of the British bomber force by 1943. Having been the mainstay of the German bombings, the Battle of the Atlantic, the African Theater, and the Greek Civil War. The Wellington was a long-range medium bomber with a striking silhouette, featuring two engines, narrow, high-aspect ratio wings, a cavernous fuselage, and a tall single fin. With a crew of five, it was powered by various engine and propeller combinations, including the Bristol Hercules and the Rolls-Royce Merlin. Later variants had de-icing and heating apparatus, as well as larger bombing capabilities. The Wellington was equipped with retractable, rotating ventral turrets and front and tail turret gun stations for defensive weaponry. The turrets were individually built and supplied due to its high cruising speeds, equipped with two 303 Browning machine guns, and originally used Nash and Thompson control systems. The Wellington's geodetic structure, invented by British aviation engineer Barnes Wallace in the 1930s, was a revolutionary approach to building airplanes. Duralumin alloy channel beams were fitted into a sturdy timber batten structure, which served as an anchor for the aircraft's doped linen skin. The Wellington was a formidable aircraft, built with a complex metal latticework that made it lightweight and sturdy. Its geodetic construction, which increased interior volume for a streamlined shape, was one of its main benefits. The Wellington was among the first to use this structure in combat operations, renowned for its invulnerability and ability to return home safely. The innovative airframe architecture allowed for quick and accurate assembly of the light geodetic structures. On July 7, 1941, the Wellington bomber faced a test when it was attacked by a German BF-110. The British pilots were on their way back from a daring attack on Munster. As they soared above the Zuider Z, they were relieved when a persistent German BF-110 attacked the aircraft. The bomber was pierced by the gunfire storm, and the rear gunner, despite being hurt, struck back, sending the other jet flying in all directions. Fuel from a burst pipe ignited a fire in the Wellington's near starboard engine, threatening to swallow the entire wing. The crew tried to put out the fire, punching a hole in the fuselage and using fire extinguishers and coffee from their flasks, 
but the flames would not go out. The bomber's fuselage held for a few minutes, allowing the crew to devise a survival strategy. Pilot Ruben Widowson ordered them to bail out, as the situation was dire and emergency landing was not feasible. They had no other choice but to parachute from a high altitude jet over hostile territory. Sergeant Ward offered to perform the unimaginable, scaling the fuselage and using an engine cover as a cushion to put out the fire. Despite the daring proposal, the young airman was eager to give it a try. Sergeant Ward initially resisted wearing a parachute to reduce wind resistance. But his crew eventually convinced him to wear it. He had a rope attached to him in case of a warplane slipping him off. With the help of his navigator, Ward climbed through the Astrodome and put on his parachute. The wind pressure hit him with an unstoppable force, making it feel like a tremendous gale, only worse than any gale I've ever known. Sergeant Ward braved the slipstream from the air screw by torning through the fabric to build hand and footholds. He crawled three feet onto the wing and three feet behind the engine, unfazed by the intense heat and blasts. He managed to put out the fire on the wing fabric before a strong wind blow blew it away. Ward returned to safety exhausted but unwavering, threatening to plunge into the chasm. He returned to the plane where his friends were standing. A fire on a leaky pipe caused significant damage to the Wellington. The fire was extinguished by burning through the cloth near the pipe but the gasoline exploded as the aircraft approached their objective. Despite the fire, the aircraft decelerated for descent, and the tenacity of the Wellington allowed them to safely land despite gunfire, bullets, and significant damage. Sergeant Ward, who bravely put out the fire, was awarded the Victoria Cross for his outstanding bravery. The Wellington remains an unbreakable aircraft in history.